Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love online. And this is our service, the message for today, dealing with no matter what the enemy tries to pull against you, God's got your back. He's got you covered. So you don't have to worry because none of it's going to come to fruition. Not with God on your side. All right. So I'm describing a dream and you can tell I cut in the middle of it, but listen to it because I go back over it to explain it. And then I go right into the message. I hope it blesses you. Was that the enemy tried to attack one or some of you and God was showing me that he failed. He was not able to complete what he tried to start. Now, I don't know how you guys have been attacked, but those two dreams said it. The snake waiting, getting ready to lurch forward and bite, and somebody stabbed it before it could get a hold of anybody. And the window, the sliding glass window, was locked, and somebody tried to get in, but they could not. So whoever you are, the enemy has tried to prod his way into your life, and he cannot. He did not, he could not, and he cannot. God is letting us know he is with us. The enemy cannot perform his enterprise. He cannot, he cannot perform or succeed in his agenda against you or me. So know that God has got his angels working on your behalf, that you are under divine protection, spiritually and naturally. God is keeping us as the apple of his eye. So don't be afraid when things go down and you wonder where do you stand with God. Obviously, God's looking after you. He's got your back. When you don't even know there's danger lurking, but some of you may have been under attack this week and God did not allow the devil to fulfill his goal in your life. And I praise God for that, for supernatural protection. Now, so what I want you to know is the, 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 the verse that came to my mind, the first verse that came to my mind when I was getting ready for this message. And I'm going to turn to it. Verse 5 of Psalms chapter 30. Psalms chapter 30, starting at verse 5. I'll start at verse four to keep it in context. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down into the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Now, a lot of times we don't get that God is working, even though we have to at times endure the negative emotions, the negative thoughts, the onslaughts of the enemy. Sometimes the thoughts we think and the feelings we feel, feel and seem so real, they seem like they're coming straight from us. Trust me, many times those are the feelings of a demonic onslaught. 
They're not even your feelings. You can be having a good day. Think about it. You can be having a good day. Nothing going wrong. Nobody getting hurt. No money getting stolen. You haven't had a car accident. You still got your job. No problems that day. You didn't lose your money, right? And then all of a sudden, this heaviness comes on you. What's the use in living my life? Oh, it's just, it's just, all oh, this is pointless. All oh, is vanity. All oh, is hopeless. What's the use? I'm just a waste of space. I mean, all this stuff starts bombarding your mind, right? I'm worthless. I'm useless. What's the point? And you think it's your thoughts. Trust me, it is not. That is the enemy's way of sucking you under. Why? There's a scripture that says, and Satan knows scripture, trust me. There's a scripture that says, the joy of the Lord is my strength, right? So Satan doesn't want you to be strong, does he? He wants to weaken you. He wants to weaken your resolve. He wants to depress you and discourage you because in your weakness, he can come in and bring you down even worse and try to make you give up on God. That's why the joy of the Lord is our strength. Satan can't do jack. When we're caught up and tied up in the Lord, when our mind is stayed on him, no matter what, we know, we're convinced God is on our side. Satan can't do it so much. And then we just do a little battle, kick him back out. He's down the street trying to find somebody else to bother. Because that's what he does. Now, I want you to go with me to 2 Peter. I'm just kind of like, Lord, Tell me which way to go right now. Now, verse 4, 2 Peter chapter 1. For those of you who want to grab a Bible, I know Marlene's got hers because I always hear her pages flipping. <laughs> okay, listen to this. Whereby, this is starting at verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Now, that divine nature comes through the Holy Spirit. That's Pat's two cents. That divine nature, the Holy Spirit comes in us and begins to change our nature, change our mindset, change our perspective, right? And then it begins to bear fruit in us. Now listen, as we cooperate. Now, verse five. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. They're gonna, he's gonna mention seven items. Add to your faith, virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms chapter 23, 23rd Psalm. Somebody needs encouragement. I don't know what this is about. But the scriptures the Lord has given me, let me let me share this with you guys. We're in the last days. That's not news. Everybody knows that. That's just Pat's two cents reiterating what we already know. We're in the last days. And the demon, the demonic activity is at an all-time high. I experienced a lot of demonic attacks during the last a week and a half in my dreams. I could tell by the kind of dreams I was having, Satan was trying to raise up some old stuff from my flesh. So I had to pray it off of me when I woke up. 
Now, we have to be very mindful, very watchful, and very prayerful. Because in this, uh, in this season, Satan is trying to take out as many of God's people as possible. Now, if we were not cautioned by the Bible to be careful, I wouldn't worry about it. But even the Bible cautions and says even the very elect can be fooled. So we have to be very careful. We have to be watchful. We cannot be dummied down by entertainment and the Internet. We cannot be dummied down by the little games we play and the little social activities we participate in. It doesn't hurt to be involved, but we cannot let them override what God is trying to download in our spirits. We need to be strong in these last days, not weak. What did I say? The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, for those of you who don't know what I shall not want means, like I didn't when I was unsaved, I shall not want means I, I'm not going to suffer lack. I'm not going to be in need. I'm not going to be in a desperate position in my life because the Lord is my shepherd. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. What do you do when trouble rises in your life? We get up in arms, don't we? It's very difficult to go to sleep and have a good night's sleep when things are plaguing our minds. But that's exactly what God enables us to do in the middle, in the middle, in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That's peace. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's the peace that passes all understanding. Still waters is a symbol of peace. He restores my soul. There comes a refreshing from the Lord, even while you're going through. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Listen, can you imagine this? Picture this. God has taken such good care of you that while you are struggling with God and God is working on you and you're, and you're dealing with the vicissitudes of life and you feel like you're halfway drowning while people are watching you on the outside, they're looking at you with wonder like, wow. I didn't know they were so strong. I didn't know they were so together. You don't feel together. You feel discombobulated because you're going through and you don't get it. But God is with you. And what God does in the presence of your enemies is make you look good. He sets everything up in your life to help you out. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Here comes the anointing. Under the crushing comes the anointing. My cup runneth over. In spite of it all, there's an inner satisfaction that nobody can meet. Only God can satisfy me like that. Inner satisfaction. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I love that scripture. That is so encouraging. You're not alone in what you're going through. You're not forsaken and forgotten by God. He has not abandoned you. He's not a deadbeat dad. He's not off to the races having fun with all his buddies while you're sitting up there crying your eyes out. He's right there with you, bottling up your tears, restoring your soul, giving you a refreshing. The other night, for example, I was laying in my bed. I was talking to the Lord about an issue. Now, sometimes we go through these seasons where nobody seems to be satisfied with what you're doing. 
you're either not good enough or you're over the top. You hear what I'm saying? You're not meeting the mark with some people and they got issues with that. Or you're over the top with other people and you're too radical, too judgmental, too opinionated in the things of God. So what ends up happening is you find yourself wanting to just back up and just say, well, I just won't do anything. But you know that what that is, is a childish form of pouting. And God does not deserve a pout. Not as good as he's been to me. Now, I, don't, I ain't going to talk for y'all. I'm talking for me. God does not deserve a pout from me. He deserves my best because he always gives me his best. So even when my feelings get hurt, y'all, and it's like, Lord, what do I do with this? So I had to battle my way through that myself. And I laid on my back last night and I said, Lord, take that one and that one and that one and everything they feel and said, take it out. Take it off my mind. Take it out my spirit. Lord, take that one and that one, all of that that I'm bothered by. Take all of that out of my system. Get it off my mind. Get it out of my emotions. Release me from all that. Take it out. And let me concentrate on what you have to say about me. And stay on task. Because I have abandoned my post. And I know that the reason I abandoned my post is because I get tired of hearing what I'm not doing right. I'm human, y'all. But I didn't want to give God a pout. That he does not deserve that. He called me to serve him. He didn't call me to pout, fold my arms and say, well, I just won't do anything. No, he didn't call me to do that. And just because I'm 66 years old does not mean I don't have my own childish ways. We all do. We all have to struggle through our flesh and fight the enemy every step of the way in order to stay on task. So I, I made my apologies and I cast all my cares on him and left it at that and slept like a baby. Cried my eyes out while I was talking to him and asked him while I was crying, wash my spirit of all the debris of everybody else's opinions of me so I can maintain my freedom that he gave me. Now, so we go through that with people because we're in this world with people. It's just going to happen. You go through holidays, you feel alone, you feel like nobody cares. If you, if you, you know, whatever you're doing, you feel like, okay, I have nowhere to go, nobody to hang with. So I'll just sleep through the holidays. That way I won't feel the, the brunt of loneliness. It helps. Sleep helps. It's a great escape. But I still have a calling on my life and I can't abandon that. And neither can you. You can't abandon your relationship with God. You cannot abandon your relationship with what he called you to do. Your relationship with the growth process he's taken you through. You can't take a vacation from it. You have to go through it. Sometimes it's a pain in the you know what. Right? But don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. And see, that's what Satan tries to make us do is faint. Now, I may take a break, but I ain't fainting. No, because God deserves way better than that from me. He's been too good to me, y'all. And he's been too good to y'all whether you want to admit it or not. Whether you recognize it or not. Because that's just the way he is. Now, all right. Now, we're going to go on to, where are we going, Lord? We are going to Psalms 116. Mm -hmm. I hope this lifts your spirits. Because whether you're going through something now or you're going to go through something tomorrow or next week, 
next month or next year. These things will be in your spirit to help gird you when that time comes. But God gave me a lot of word. So for those of you who get bored with God's word, go on and, and change channels and go watch a movie somewhere. Because this, this word is going to have a lot of scripture in it. Psalms 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me. That means it, in, it wrapped around me. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. <laughs> I was brought low and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Oh Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. And thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my, vow, my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of the O Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. See, that praise comes from when he restores our soul. We, we, we get beside ourselves in gratitude because we realize that God didn't leave us where we were. He didn't leave us in the funk. He didn't leave us in that pit. He didn't leave us at the mercy of that snake that tried to bite us. Right? Tried to poison our mind, our emotions. He didn't leave us there. He protected us. He didn't let the enemy break in secretly and begin to wreak havoc in our lives. He didn't allow it. While we slept, he protected. God delivers. He heals. You don't have to stay where you are. You can choose to climb up out of that funk. You don't have to set up camp. Because God is well able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because you got to work that power. If I want the light, I got to reach up and turn that switch on. If I don't turn the switch on, I can look at it and hope the light comes on all I want. But it ain't coming on until I put forth an effort and participate in getting that light on. The power is there. All I have to do is access the power. Hmm. All right. Now, are you at? Accessing God's power? Or are you staring up at Him with your eyes crossed and your lip poked out and your arms folded, sucking your teeth? Huh? What are you doing with the power He already gave you? Mmm, think about that. All right. Now, hmm. Okay, we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 4. Fine. All right. Starting at verse six, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You notice it didn't say can devour. You notice it didn't say who he chooses to devour, whom he may devour. 
May I? That means he cannot devour you or me unless we give him permission, unless we hand him the keys to the car, the keys to the door, the keys to the house, the keys to our mind, the keys to our spirit, the keys to our mindset, the keys to our emotional, hello, the keys to our perspective. Hmm. Yeah. You going to give the devil your keys? You go right on ahead. As for me and my house, I'm serving the Lord. All right. Now, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. See, when we humble ourselves, God exalts. He exalts. He will abase those that rise themselves up and, and get all full of themselves, you know. But he, he will raise up those who humble themselves. Now, verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 Wow. There's a verse. I'm going to see if I can find it. I never saw it like that before. But there's a verse. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. I want you to hear this verse. This is deep. I love what he said about the light of his sun shining, rising on you. Let me see if I can find it. Give me a second, y'all. There it is. Okay. This is 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And we're looking at verse 18 and 19. Ooh, wow. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Listen to this. This is the key word right here. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Who is that day star? Jesus Christ. There comes a point where something arises in your heart. Something clicks. You get it. You know you and God are connected. You don't just believe it. You know it. And when that rises in your spirit like that, you can go through anything. Huh. You can go through anything because you know that he has arisen in your heart. Mm. It's just something about that that grabbed my attention. It's almost like I can talk to you. I know I got the power in the house. It looks dark right now. It's shadowy. But I got to use my effort. The power's on. I know the power's on because I paid the bill. The power's in you because Jesus paid it all. He paid the price. Now, here is me accessing the power. There it is. The light is on. The light is shining, but it's also shining in my heart. I got the light. I got it. No matter how dark it is in my life, I got the light. Oh, I don't know if you see that. If you get it, ask the Holy, ask God to let the Holy Spirit interpret that in a way where you really see it the way he wants you to. All right. Now, I'm saying to this to you, be encouraged. Be encouraged because no matter what is going on in our lives, God is in control. Not the devil. Not your finances. Not your circumstances. You hear what I'm saying? God is in control. And I want you to remember that so that you don't lose hope. 
Now, this is the final scripture I'm reading for this message. And I hope it encourages you because this is God's message to his people. We're wondering how long is it going to take for Jesus to return? We're wondering how far into the to the uh, to the um, tribulation do we have to travel? What all do we have to suffer through it? It's scary. It, the times feel precarious right in through here. And we're wondering now, while we're waiting for all of this to break out, we're going through our own little personal battles. How long? Am I going to fail? Am I going to make it? Starting at verse 8, we are looking at 2 Peter chapter 3. Yeah, starting at verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us would not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Imagine that. Seeing then, that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation? That's behavior, attitude, and godliness. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of, the, of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. See, we're not going out this time with a flood. We're going out by fire. Think about that. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him, found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him as written unto you. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Listen, be encouraged. We have to look up because our redemption draweth nigh, you guys. We are not lost in a situation. God is not twiddling his thumbs saying, what do I do? What do I do? Oh no, it's going to go in the pot. What do I do with these people? What do I do with this world? I don't know what to do, what to, uh, what to do, what to do, what to do. Oh no, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? No, trust me. He's got this whole thing. He's got it. He's got you. He's got me. He's got it. You cannot lose hope because it looks like everything's unraveling before your eyes. I don't care how chaotic. I don't care how scary things look. I don't care how dark things look. Dealing with all these sinful ways and people, uh, the great forsaking taking place and, and how people are turning their backs on God and you can't use the name Jesus. You can cuss up a storm. You can show boobs and butt all day long, but you cannot use the name Jesus. No matter how things are going in this world, no matter how difficult it is dealing with the demonic attacks, you've got authority. You've got authority, y'all. You got to use the authority and access that power that God already gave you. And trust. Trust in his word. Trust in his precious promises. One day we're going to be out of here, y'all. Mm -hmm. And it will have been worth it all. Mm. All right. Now, here's your song, and I'm done. This is the song the Lord laid on my heart to sing. For those of you who are wrestling in your spirits, who are struggling, who are all up in arms right now.
up tight, tangled up, whatever. Rest, the Lord is near. Refuse to fear. Enjoy his love. I'm not trying to sing a solo, so don't even, you know, look for a pretty voice. I want you to get the message of this song. Trust his mighty power rules every hour of all your days. There is no need for needless worry with such a savior. You have no cause to ever doubt his perfect love still reassures in all your trials. Call him when you get frightened. Call him with loving care. He'll lift your burdens and you'll rest. The Lord is near. Refuse to fear. Enjoy his love. Amen. God bless you. Okay, this is regarding all the words that you said today. Uh, when Satan talks, don't let him get you down. And when he does, the way we fight back is not sitting there getting pouting and, and getting upset. Right. How you fight back is with your mouth. Right. Those are your spiritual warfare ways of doing it. And that, yes. the reason I keep on harping on this is really hard for us to believe that speaking with our mouth is our weapon in God's world. But this is exactly how it works. So next time, instead of getting frustrated, mm -hmm. what you're to do is open your mouth and counteract what the enemy has said. For instance, this week, my car decided to uh, have the oil light come on, and I had to bring it in. And I thought, okay, well, I'm not going to get upset. I'm just going to... Uh, Pray to God that it's going to be perfectly fine. Uh, we're going to find close to nothing. I'm going to get out of there immediately, and it's not going to cost me anything. And I went in, and uh, I got on the uh, cart. Uh, everything was okay. Uh, we think that they didn't add oil the last checkup I had, whereas mm -hmm. I paid for it. But we don't think they added the oil. So. Possibly there won't be anything happening and I'll, I'll go back in another whatever. But I didn't freak out. I used my mouth right. to fight back. Okay. We should be putting on our armor each and every day. Mm -hmm. That means verbally saying, I put on uh, my belt of truth, uh, my helmet of, of righteousness, uh, my, uh, you know, the whole shield, everything. My, uh, my faith will get me through the fiery darts. My mouth will, uh, you know, be my fighting weapon, etc. Um, anyhow, you should be uh, putting this on each and every day to keep you safe. Um, let's see here. Uh, Rashad, when you mentioned um, that uh, you had repented. I, I applaud you. I applaud you fully. It is a total reset and try your best to continue following his word. You have reset yourself. So that's great. And I'm very proud of you. Uh, a little later on, you mentioned the uh, flesh. The flesh is what you want to stay out of. You want to use the word Again, I go back to you want to use your word because if let's say you try to kill someone with the sword, you will be killed with the sword yourself. That means I think the flesh is is, is basically something you don't want to kill someone with an actual sword. You want to kill them with word. Yes. Anyhow, mm -hmm. excellent uh, talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. See, the best thing to do with your... Your spiritual armor is never take it off. Never take it off. Keep that stuff on. Keep your helmet. Keep your sword. Keep it all up in you and on you. I mean, it should always be right 
at, at, at your very next breath, you should be utilizing some part of your arm. Can I say something? Of course. It, what is, well, earlier, while you was preaching, Pat, yeah. um, I, I started doing exactly in my head what Lynn was just talking about, which is crazy. Wow. I was thinking of All right. <laughs> It was a scenario playing in my mind. Yeah. And about the time when my friend was like talking and he was like, oh, I don't like, I don't like praying to God and just asking him for stuff and asking or, or I don't like, like kind of like casting his cares on God because he felt like, oh, I'm only asking God for stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. In my head, I started thinking of what the word. I kept on going like how the enemy would say the enemy would say something like the enemy is talking through him right saying right. that right and right. backing him with the word I said well cast your cares upon me for I care for you it was like it was so weird how because I was like busy doing something while you're while you're preaching and that is a scenario was going through my head about every time the enemy say something to me or every time you know I, I basically attack back with the word yeah but yeah I, I was thinking of. This is what went through my head. It was like words, like it was like the word is alive. Uh -huh. The word is life. And right. as power is it's real. It's all this stuff is going through my head. Like, and this weird thing Lance started talking about. It's like a confirmation. Yes, it like, is. It is a confirmation. Beautiful. You know. Nothing is a coincidence, Rashad. Ah, uh, that's yeah. right. Especially with our group. <laughs> wow. Beautiful, Lynn. Thanks, Rashad, for that. That confirmation. That's great. Yes. Oh. <laughs> the other day, because at work, um, we were going to outsource this part that used to be made, you know, using machines and they cut metal and stuff like that. And, and there's a fixture that holds the part in place so that it doesn't move. Yeah. And in order for it to be machined, but um, we we couldn't find it. It didn't, it didn't fit with the narrative of, of the gospel to look for some parts for you know in the machine shop. Right. But it helps you anyways. You know. That's how personal he is. What's not important to people, he treats as important. That's what I love about him. You know, he's like our friend, and uh, wouldn't your friend help you if Thank you. he knew where, where your CNC part was? You Thank know? you. So he's there to help us. Yeah. Uh, no matter if we need to find something, no matter if we want to give him something that's really been weighing us down, mm -hmm. he will take that burden from us. Yes. I have given many people as far as unforgiveness. Yes. That's one thing you can give him. Yes. You can sit there and, and you can say, Lord, please take all this unforgiveness. I want to forgive fully. Uh, I, I, I am now giving all these burdens to you. So I will start afresh and anew. And I am no longer mad at this person. I'm no right. longer, uh, I give you all the hate, all the indifference all the uh sadness and i give it to you now Anyhow, right something like that right yes i agree because just like you were saying the times that we're living in pat we're just living in times where things that we can see from just a, a decade ago because we're coming upon a new year mm -hmm. 2020 and you know, and I always say like 10 years because it's not that long ago, but it's long enough, um, you know, to see the difference of the time, right. you know, of the wickedness that, that is coming upon the earth. And, mm -hmm. You know, if you just look at the world news, I mean, things that's happening in the world, uh, around the world, it's like in, the, in this country, explosions, I mean, Buses, school buses crashing. I mean, things that never happened before. Mm -hmm. You know, with children passing, people are hitting people and running, and and it just shows you the heart of people. Yeah. And so, you know, we're in a time where you have to put that trust. It has got to be not in your mind, That's not right. in your marriage, not in what you're making and your money that you have in a bank or some gold 
or Bitcoin. But your trust has to be in Jesus Christ. Exactly. You have to be with yeah. you know that no matter what happens, because, you know, the mistakes that we made, the, the insecurities that we have, that sometimes the, the, the fight, the spiritual attacks that we have, like you were saying, and, you know, you can have a great day. And then all of a sudden the enemy can come and start messing with your mind and making you feel like you're nothing. Right. And that's just the fight and the battle that we have. But sometimes the enemy will will try to make us feel and think that we're not even worthy of his love and his forgiveness. And that's just how he work, works because he wants you to doubt him. We mm -hmm. need to trust him more than anything. Right. Even in our failures, trust and know that he loves us and he sees and understands that we, we're, we're falling short of the glory. And that's why he died on the cross. Know that a just man falls seven times, but you get back up. Right. And you keep and you bear your cross, but that trust never, you never doubt his trust or right. his glory. And never doubt him in the midst of it. And know mm -hmm. that no matter what happens, I know who loves me. Yes. And I know who will always love me more yes. than anyone on this world. Yes. We can't even imagine that kind of love. No. Because it says the world is going to be redeemed. All of it is going to be brought back through love. That's right. So God is love. And that and you, we don't understand that power. Mm -mm. And it has to be some kind of love for you to send your only begotten son. To go through all that, to live perfect, to be humiliated, to be spat on and tortured and all the right. things that was done. And he says, forgiveness. Right. I come to my own, but my own receive me not. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we don't realize the characteristics of, of a mighty God that mm -hmm. we serve. And then That's we right. look at the enemy and, and how narcissistic and wicked and evil yeah. and diabolical. And we look at this fallen and broken world and say... How can a God allow these things to happen when we don't realize that because we're in a spiritual fight and a spiritual battle until this time, you know, and, and right. just the spiritual battle where it's about to come to a head, where it's about, you know, war ha happened in the heavens and now what happens so, as above, so below. And all this, it's all leading up to us choosing a loving God. Right. Or, uh, you know, the enemy mm -hmm. and his kingdom and his wickedness. Hmm. So, yeah. Wow. Yep. Well, you guys want to take communion? And while sure. we're getting ready, those that have it will take it today, and those that don't will do it Tuesday. Okay, we're going to go to verse 24 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For those of you who have your elements, we ask you, Lord, to bless these elements in the name of Jesus. We ask you to forgive us for sin. In the name of Jesus, and Father, if there's anybody or anything we have issues with, that we don't have the victory, we ask you for mercy to forgive us, and we give, Lord, we are willing to forgive, we are willing to lay it down, we ask you to help us, and, and forgive us in Jesus' name, amen. Now, starting at verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body. He didn't say this is symbolic of my body. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped it, said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body. And that means in an unworthy manner. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. That's why, because you're not discerning the Lord's body, the unity, the bond we have. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, or in other words, are dead. Mm -hmm. For if ye would judge ourselves, we will not be judged. 
All right. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. All right. So let's take communion, those of you who are able to. And we have asked the Lord. We'll take a, a 15 seconds to ask the Lord a, a little moment of silence. If there's anything in your spirit or your life that's not right, ask God to forgive you, cleanse you, deliver you, heal you, and enable you to get it right in Jesus' name right now. Father, we thank you for your mercy, and we ask you, Lord, for complete forgiveness and pardon and for ability that we don't have to do things your way. In the name of Jesus. Now we take of your body that was broken for us. We bless it. And we thank you that your body was broken. That our bodies could be healed and whole. That our emotions and minds can be healed and whole. And we take of your body right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take. And now we're going to take the grape juice. Father, this was the blood that you shed for us. We're doing this in remembrance of you. That we would be redeemed and our souls would be restored. We thank you for mercy, favor, blessing, prosperity, and abundant life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take of his blood. Amen. We're done, y'all. All right. Praise God.